The Capital One Venture X has been the credit card community's new hotness since 2022. And there's a lot of good reason for this, but I'm not so sure it's as good as everyone says it is. This card has kind of been off my radar a little bit, namely because the approval odds haven't been so great. But some recent data points on Reddit suggest that Capital One might be loosening up their approval algorithm metrics. I have three new cards in the last five months, two personal and one business, but I thought, let's give it a shot. So this last Monday on my Monday Night Live stream, I applied live on air for the Capital One Venture X. Keep watching and I'm gonna tell you if I got approved or denied, why I'm a little lukewarm on this card overall, and what I'll do with the points if I get them. All right, the Capital One Venture X. If I'm being honest, I haven't been as impressed with this card as the general consensus. Mainly because I find it a little challenging how people justify the annual fee. The annual fee, if you did not know, is $395. If I were to add the Venture X to my wallet, this would immediately become the highest cost annual fee in my wallet. Previously, that place was given to the American Express Platinum, but I got rid of that card when they increased their annual fee to $695, and I just could not justify it any longer. Uh, right now, the highest annual fee card I have is the American Express Gold card at $250. And so to add a $395 annual fee card to my wallet is a really big deal. But if you ask anybody that's a fan of this card, they will quickly tell you that that annual fee can easily be taken care of with the top two perks of the Venture X. So what are those perks? Well, you have 10,000 anniversary miles given to you every year that you own the card. This is worth roughly $100 in value. And then you also get $300 annually of travel credit. But there is a catch. See, this isn't a catch-all statement credit that just applies to your statement anytime that you spend within a typical travel category. No, that's not how this works. In order to get this $300 Capital One travel credit, you have to use the Capital One travel portal. Now, the thing about travel portals are that they're terrible, all right? Every single travel portal is terrible. I would much prefer to transfer my points out to many of the partners uh, that Chase and Amex and Capital One have and then book directly with these vendors, right? Like I would rather transfer out to Hyatt and book directly with Hyatt and Chase instead of using the Chase travel portal to book through Hyatt. Uh, there's reasons for this, and all the travel portals um, share these problems. Like They are not specific to any one portal, but they all share the same problems. Now, here are some of the problems. One, you get limited options, right? You're not going to see all the options typically available to you if you were booking direct. That's issue number one. Two, the prices and options you do see are typically inflated. Maybe not by a lot, and maybe, yes, you'll find an occasional deal where it's a little bit cheaper. But oftentimes you're gonna see just a little bit added on to the cost versus if you book direct. And that's to really help cover the expense of these travel portals. They're just trying to add some additional tax on the top and they shave it off whenever you pay that price. And so I'm getting $300 in credit, yeah, but if I'm paying higher prices, then that's really not gonna do me any good. Also, a lot of these portals will have non-refundable purchasing in the fine print. And so that's gonna make things like cancellations and changes uh, either next to impossible or you're unable to do them at all. And in most cases, you're not gonna earn uh, loyalty points with those programs, right? And if you already have status with certain programs, you're not gonna get those status perks with those purchases because you're not purchasing direct through those vendors. Uh, and so all of this combines the travel portals are just not ideal. I try to avoid them at all costs. And so to have the Venture X basically force me to use the portal, well, I just, I just don't like that. And so honestly, at first glance, I'm not crazy about the Venture X and the, the way that it's trying to help me justify the cost of this annual fee. Now, despite all that, I decided to apply anyways. 
Why? Well, a few reasons why I really like the Capital One Venture X. The first one is this is arguably the best travel card for lounge access out there right now. Uh, you can make a case for the American Express Platinum. Obviously, you get um, the uh, Centurion lounges and access to Priority Pass. I mean, you get a ton of lounge access with the Platinum card. But with that $695 annual fee, I found myself, it was just too much work to use all of the credits to help offset that annual fee. And I, I just did not see the value in it for me. If you get value out of the Platinum, that's great. And I can see why you would say that is the best travel card and that is the best lounge access card. But for a normal person, by normal I mean like, uh, you make a normal salary, you, you travel occasionally, I really think the Venture X is a better overall card. First, you get access to the Capital One lounges, which are increasing. Right now, there's only uh, two in Dallas, Fort Worth, and Dallas, with uh, one in Denver coming up. But you also get access to Priority Pass lounges, right? And so this is the same one of the same networks that Amex Platinum has. But here's the best thing about the Venture X and Priority Pass. You get to go and take two free guests every single time. So you get three people, just with your one membership, you get three people into, the, into these lounges every single time. More than that, with the Venture X, I can add an authorized user, let's say my wife, uh, as an authorized user for free onto this card, and she gets all of those same benefits independently. So I would have a priority pass and I could bring two guests and she would have a priority pass and she could bring two guests. For our family of four, that's gonna work out because each of us can bring a guest, our children, and the four of us get into uh, the lounge for free. With the platinum card, I could only bring my wife and then I had to pay for my kids. So right off the bat already, this is a better option. But I think, I think the Venture X, you can have like up to four uh, authorized users on this, or maybe, maybe three, three or four. And so th this is like endless priority pass <laughs> access for you and your family of eight if you want to give authorized users to uh, you know, your spouse and older kids or whatever the case may be. So this is a phenomenal deal for priority pass. Now, you do not get access to the priority pass restaurant network but the lounge access alone makes this such a valuable perk. If you went on the Priority Passes website and tried to just buy this level of access, you're gonna land somewhere between their middle tier and top tier uh, plan uh, because of limitations with guests, but again, the authorized user hack that you can do, I mean, easily I think this value is close to the top tier at $470. You add in some of their other perks like Hertz President Circle status, global entry TSA pre-check statements, trip delay reimbursement, cell phone protection, primary rental car insurance, come on, primary car insurance, and the uh, extended protections uh, on purchases. When you dive deep into this card, you're like, oh my gosh, this card is pretty elite. The second reason that I was very interested in this card right now is because of the 90,000 point sign up bonus offer. Now this is not the public offer. The public offer is still 75,000 points. Uh, even referral codes are 75,000 point offers, but this 90,000 point offer is floating around there. I found it on Doctor of Credit. I'm gonna link it below. But if we take a look at the point sky evaluations for Capital One Miles, if you just got the 75,000 point offer, that would be worth roughly $1,388 in value. And a 90,000 point offer is $1,665 in value. That's almost $300 more for this sign up bonus alone. Add in the $4,000 I need to spend in order to hit the bonus, with 2x miles back on every dollar, that's at least 98,000 points, almost 100,000 Capital One miles I would get from getting this card. That is absolutely insane value. And the third reason I was interested in this card recently was, again, these data points that I saw on Reddit. And I'm not gonna get into the details on all of them, but they were pretty obscure. Everyone had some different scenarios going on that uh, on the surface would make me think that Capital One would not have approved them. But it makes me think that at least as of the filming of this video, September of 2023, that 
maybe Capital One is loosening up their algorithm a little bit. Uh, and so I'm sitting here with three cards, three new cards in the last five months. That's uh, two personal cards and one business card. Uh, and the, the second personal card and the business card are all within the last three months. And I'm like, man, normally I would not expect that velocity of cards onto my, onto my credit report to allow me to be able to be approved for really any Capital One card. But seeing some of these obscure data points, I thought, man, I'm gonna give it a shot. So that brings us to last Monday night online. I'm actually getting ready for the live broadcast and that is when I noticed all of these Reddit data points. And so I decided that I was going to go live on YouTube that night and I was going to uh, fill out an application live online for the Capital One Venture X. And so here's what happened. Here we go. Everyone ready? We're gonna see if we get approved. This will be crazy if I get approved. I do not anticipate, I do not expect it. I fully expect to get denied. Oh! This is, look at this. Come on. Wow. $30,000 credit line. Come on. That is. That is a thing of beauty right there. Oh my goodness. Well, that was a surprise. I got approved. And the best part about this is I got the 90,000 point sign up bonus. I'm so excited. Uh, with the 4,000 in spend, I need to get there. It's gonna be close to 100,000 Capital One miles I'm gonna have uh, just by hitting the sign up bonus. Uh, man, this is awesome. And after being lukewarm on this card for such a long time, it turns out I'm the proud new owner of a Capital One Venture X. This is my very first Capital One card. And so I'm excited to add it to my wallet. Next week, I am flying to San Francisco. I'm gonna be using my Priority Pass access at uh, the Pittsburgh airport. And so pumped about that. And uh, yeah, excited about Priority Pass, excited about the Hertz President Circle and some of the travel protections, purchase protections. I just think this is gonna be a great addition to my wallet and excited to really dig in and explore the Capital One travel portal. I stand by everything I said about the travel portals earlier, but uh, I'm excited to really give it a shot and be able to re report back on my experiences. But my main goal with these points is actually to book a business class flight to Europe. I'm lo looking at Lufthansa first class. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Uh, and Swiss business class. Uh, the Lufthansa is 87,000 miles and the Swiss is 63,000 miles, both booked through uh, Avianca Life Miles. I was able to find some pretty good availability for the Swiss business class already. And so one of my next priorities is to get my wife this card on her own so she can get the bonus as well. And uh, yeah, I think this is how we're gonna get uh, our next business class flight to Europe. That is at least the plan. Well, that's it for today, but I need to know, what do you think of the Venture X? Do you think it's worth the hype or are you a little cold on this card? Are you gonna try and apply for the 90,000 signup bonus? And if you have used the Capital One Travel Portal, what has your experience been like? Drop some comments in below. I would love to see them and respond. And if you're still watching, if you wouldn't mind, hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.